Well, welcome back, theme park wizard. We have our good old friend, Orange Girl 55, with us. Say hello. How you doing, Ethan? It's good to be back, buddy. <laughs> yes, we have some great news to talk about on the East and West Coast. As we're getting into summertime and we're all getting anxious, anxious to go back. So as you heard, Universal Orlando opens June 5th, officially June 1st and for the other people. But wow, isn't that so exciting? What, what do you think of this great news? Um, I'm happy about it. Like I've been really vocal in my um, support of reopening the economy. I think we do need to reopen our economy. Mm -hmm. um, now that doesn't mean reopen and go back to business as usual. Obviously, when we reopen, we need to have the, the masks. We need to mm. have social distancing. We need to have, there need to be protocol and guidelines in place. But um, yeah, I mean, Universal is doing it right. You know, they're opening it up. They're opening it pretty quickly, very quickly. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I support them. I, I, I wish Disney would take the same approach. I Hopefully, this will put some pressure on Walt Disney World, mm -hmm. you know, to open up soon. And I think it will. I, I yeah. really do. Um, I, I would be very surprised if Walt Disney World lets Universal dominate the theme park market in Orlando for very long. They're gonna, Disney's going to have to open up. They can't wait until July or August. It, it, oh, it's, no way. There's no way now. There's no mm -hmm. way. Because, uh, and what do you think of their, um, their decision for the no reservations? I like that. You know, and I, I know a lot of people will disagree with me on that. I mean, I know a lot of people like the reservations, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of old school. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't like the reservations. I'd rather just wake up early and just go to the park. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's just the old school in me. I just, the, the reservation system is kind of a hassle in my opinion. And mm -hmm. what are they going to do? Let's, for example, let's say Disney does a reservation system, right? Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with like signature plus passes that you pay fifteen hundred dollars a year? For mm, yeah, that's my question. Like the passes, like how are you yeah. gonna, you know, keep up? Oh, it's an animal. I love dogs. Oh, that's not an animal. Never mind. Um, <laughs> oh. I, but yeah, people. Um, what should we call it? Um, yeah, I pay a thousand something for those passes, and you know they can't can't go. I'll be that would uh, make your uh, past kind of worthless at times. Yeah, it'll make it, it'll make it, it, you know, it leads to issues. So I'm very curious to see what Disney does. And um, I, I commend Universal for, for not having reservations. They're just going to cap their capacity. They're, they're going to prevent, you know, at a certain point, prevent people from coming in. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the way to go, you know. And, and we'll see what they do here in California. We'll see how they, how they do it in Cali. And I remember uh, I was watching that fresh baked video yesterday where he was talking about the no reservations. But he was talking, I know he said he didn't know a lot about Orlando, but I think he it seemed to forget, or maybe he didn't know, they have like three parks there, you know, Islands of Adventure, uh, University of Florida and Volcano Bay, they're all opening at the same time. So he said, because I guess he was worried that a whole bunch of people were gonna come up and show up and then like thousands of people will be turned away. But then they can just go to the other theme parks. It's right across the the, the way. So that's why I think I think that's a good. The no reservations is pretty good because if one of the one of the three parks filled up, they can just send guests to the other two um, that are, are are bigger and slightly probably uh, have more capacity. So I think it'll work out. Also, because um, as you know, you made another good point that no one's gonna like be fly or not no one, but very few people are gonna like fly across the country to go to Universal Orlando. It might be for the first couple of months, even for Disney World, say maybe like a locals thing or like a nearby states drive type of thing. I feel like that would greatly limit the capacity anyway. So you probably won't even need a reservation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Florida is a different market and everything in Florida seems very like planning based you know mm -hmm. like people come from out of state people come from out of country that's mm -hmm. like the focus of their of, of, of who goes to florida pretty much and everything is like a week everything is like weeks and months planned in advance you know we're out here in california it's like 
we have an army of annual pass holders that are willing to go to the parks on a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. You know, Florida doesn't really have that, like we like we do. I mean, they have annual pass holders. But yeah, but they have as many. Anymore. Yeah, they're all the. So yeah, people can't play. Actually, that means. Hmm. I wonder when. Like even I feel like if it was like back to normal, I feel like Florida's capacity would still be at like that reduced capacity just because of low demand from uh, you know those out of township travelers. That's very interesting. So I feel like it's probably pretty pretty um pretty easy to implement the self I mean the social distancing at those parks because I feel like again there's just not too many people. I mean there'll be people that go, but like not too many people like over here or you'd have a line off the five freeway just to try to get try to get into downtown <laughs> Disney. Yeah. And then also Legoland is open June first. So that means as every major theme park besides SeaWorld and Disney. SeaWorld's been testing their out their coasters, so I feel like they're gonna open next month. So yeah, Disney would have to reopen in June or else they'd be the last ones to the party. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's what I've been saying, too. Like, now that Universal has announced June 5th, Legoland is June 1st, I, I, I just can't imagine Walt Disney World waiting much longer after that to reopen. You know, and here's the thing. When it comes to the COVID-19 situation, it's like you don't want to be, like, the first, right? Like, mm-hmm. Universal is the first, or actually, technically, now Legoland's the first. So, so Disney has like, like cover now. They can be like, yeah, we're gonna open on June seventh, and you know, they 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 they're not gonna bear the brunt of of, of another outbreak necessarily because mm-hmm. you know what? Hey, Universal open. Hey, Legoland open. So mm-hmm. now the, the 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 risk is a little bit lesser because you know they don't have to be the only one open in the area. So I, I would just be I would be shocked. If 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 Disney sat on that and, and didn't open for like a month after after Universal and, and Legoland, I would be absolutely shocked. I I seriously cannot see that happening. <laughs> yeah, me too. And actually, I did a post, or uh, you probably saw that someone posted a picture of the monorails testing at, at Disney World. I posted that, and then uh, but it was a few days before Universal announced their opening, and then someone commented on the post that. Uh, they're trying to argue with me, saying, "Oh, that doesn't mean Universal or uh, Disney World's going to open sometime soon." I'm like, "But they said they they're going to present opening plans next week for a date." Oh, but well, that doesn't mean they're going to open anytime soon. I'm like, "Okay, we shall see." She kept laughing at me. I'm like, "All right." So next week, that person is going to be. I'm going to put it in their face that, <laughs> that like I'm telling, "Hey, look, I told you so." Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's, I don't know, on, on a tangent, it just feels like, I feel like social media lately has been, maybe because everyone's in quarantine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe they're all going stir crazy. Maybe. You know? I just feel like <laughs> it's gotten so ridiculous, you know, and so mean. It's, it's crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Um, let's see, hold on. And, oh, yeah, and of course, like, all the other Orlando, the smaller stuff, like, I think <laughs> Gatorland opened today and Fun Spot Orlando opened, like, last week. So, almost, like, everything is open in Orlando, you know, at the Chris Capacity. So, super exciting stuff for Walt Disney World. And then, the West Coast, now it's our turn. We have to follow them, Chris. We gotta follow them. And hopefully, in the, let's see. <laughs> It's May, Orange County, California. <laughs> Today, got approved for the, the you know, the full phase two thing, which includes shopping or outdoor shopping malls. So that's why I'm, I'm hoping that downtown Disney can, will make an announcement for sometime in early June because they got approved for Orange County today, which of course, nice. people don't know Orange County, or downtown Disney's in Orange, Orange County. So that really, so downtown Disney is legally allowed now to open. So I'm hoping in early June, Open it up. up. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, we've been waiting so long. How packed do you think it'll be? Or how many people do you think it will be trying to go to downtown Disney if they do announce no? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be busier than Disney Springs in Florida for sure. Because like mm-hmm. I said, we have a much more local fan base mm-hmm. that's going to that's gonna come. Like, like Disneyland Resort doesn't mess around. 
They don't mess mm-hmm. around. When, when there's a new popcorn bucket or there's a new pin or anything, mm-hmm. people come in huge masses, right? Yeah. And, and that's going to happen here. We're going to have a massive influx of people. The minute they announce it opens, it's going to be a line around the uh, – <laughs> through snaking through Anaheim to get in. I really do believe that. Now, I could be wrong. I could be mm-hmm. wrong. It could be completely dead. It could be a ghost town, you know, but mm-hmm. I really doubt it. I think that there's going to be a lot of people waiting to get into downtown Disney. Yeah, same. Because, yeah, for those popcorn buckets, they get up to easily like two hours long to get stand line for a pop. Can you imagine you're stand line in Tomorrowland or Main Street two hours for a popcorn bucket? That's, ins- that's so that's longer than most rides. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I would, yeah, like I, like you said, like I wouldn't even do that for a ride. Like I wouldn't even wait two hours for Indiana Jones. But it, like, there's no way, there's no way you would get me to wait two hours for a pop. I'd rather, I'd rather just wait and pay more on Amazon when it, in a few months. Oh yeah, I'd well maybe you sell it more than waiting in line for two hours. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's so much time out of your day, and then you wait. You know, usually if you're waiting two hours for something, you know, you get a satisfying thing at the end. But, like, oh, you're waiting two hours to pay, like, $20 or however much those things cost. That's insane. Now, in regards, do you think, I mean, I guess, with the Orange County stuff, and this question might be answered, but do you think downtown Disney or Universal City Walk Hollywood are going to be open? Uh, like, which one do you think will be open first? Oh, you know, considering the trend, I, I think City Walk is going to be first. Oh, really? I really do. I think Universal seems more gung-ho on the reopening right now. I think they're going to reopen first, and then we'll get it downtown Disney. But um, there was some there was some news recently that Universal – man, I don't remember where I heard it. Oh, I saw something on Twitter, right? Mid Early June or mid-June, the City Walk. I saw something on Twitter. It says Universal hopes to do mid-June in the city. Yeah. Yeah, there's something like on social media about that, and I yeah, I think Universal is gonna be first out the gate. I really do. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, like I hope they can like work with LA County and do that because that'd be so cool. I, you don't understand, guys, how how many nights I've been dreaming about these places. I start dreaming <laughs> about these places. That means I haven't been there anywhere for too long. You know, I've uh, been to Disneyland. I mean, I've taken couple months off from Disneyland at a time because it's farther for me but like everything you know how hard that is that's so difficult it's been how many weeks like 11 or 12 that's so long I've been I've been having a craving for Universal lately and it's kind of weird like I can go a long time without going to Universal Studios like mm-hmm. I, I can't go more than a month without Disney but I can go a long time at least a year or so without Universal mm-hmm. But lately, I've been having such a craving to go to Universal Studios. I don't know what it is. Is it because maybe maybe because it's like it all of a sudden it's just taken away from you? Like now, yeah. even if you wanted to, you can't. So like, wait a second, you know? I feel you know I feel like it's the same with like a lot of people. Like wow, no, that's like me with not very far. I've been there like years, but I'm like wow. Now I always I also wanted to go there like before this, but now like, I really can't go. I'm like oh wait, now I really should go to that place. But um, yeah, universe. I miss that place. I'm still mad. This virus took away my uh, secret life of pets. For those of you who watch my channel, I was supposed to because secret uh, universal. That's one thing I love. That universal does. Disney, I think, used to do this with their pass holders, but I don't think so recently. But <laughs> universal, uh, universal, universal's new ride, secret life of pets, and they're it was supposed to open March 27th, but they're giving a full two weeks. To annual pass holders to ride the ride before everyone else, and you just had to make a reservation. And I had my reservation for the weekend of the park closure. I was so upset. <laughs> wow, so bad. that sucks, dude. Yeah, it, this whole thing has really thrown a wrench in everybody's plans. You know, it, it's been crazy. I yeah. miss the parks. I like, like, like I said, I I want to go to Universal again. You know, I mean, I want to go to Disney again. I want to just be outside and have a good time i'm mm-hmm. so sick of being stuck in the house and being mm-hmm. it just it's just it's a bummer it's a drag yeah and you know i mean i know oh and actually that but good, good question because I'm, it seems i don't for some reason i don't know why the mask thing maybe because it's not like our 
the cultural thing, but the mask thing seems to be a little bit more like controversial than I thought it would be. I thought, you know, if they say you have to wear a mask, that's like, oh, okay, that's fine. I just want to go over there. But I see at least on social media, like, mask, why am I wearing a mask? I don't want to wear a mask. A mask. Um, um, so I don't know. Do, well, how, what are your thoughts on mask wearing for as long period? I mean, I guess I kind of understand in Florida because it's hot and humid, but there's some masks. If you have the good masks, which are only like six dollars for a like good mask. There's like they're very breathable. I mean, that's I have breathable masks. So what are your what are your thoughts on the mask wearing for long periods of time and all that? Stuff? I I personally I always wear a mask. I go on I go on walks around my neighborhood mm. every single day. I go for about an hour every day, and I, I rarely come across anybody. I mean, occasionally I'll come across a person or whatever, but. Even under those circumstances, I always wear a mask. I actually have a few. And for me, the, the mask stuff has been kind of fun in a weird way because you can buy like cool masks online, like Theme Park Wizards masks. Yes. <laughs> you know, what inspired me to make those masks was one other, another YouTuber. But two, because I tried to get the Marvel masks on you know, the Shop Disney website. But, you know, me, I was, I'm always, I always seem to be late to everything. So there, of course, the pre-orders and all that was sold out. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make my own mask. I still want those Marvel masks. Those, those are really cool. The Black Panther one on the yeah. shop set looks super cool. And that's why I thought, also, you're right. I think I thought people would love to wear a mask. Because, like, my aunt, she customized hers with, like, all these jewels. And, like, you can make cool. them, like, really creative. But um, I don't understand, like, why people would not. People are it. against it. It's weird. Yeah. It's really weird. But I have two masks I'm going to show you right now. I got two masks that I love. And they're Disney related. I got this one. Oh, Stitch. Which yeah, is Oh Haunted, Haunted Mansion. Mansion. Haunted Mansion. I think that's so. the 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 wallpaper for Haunted Mansion. And then I got this one, which is Ooh, the monorail. Nice. Monorail. <laughs> but you know what? It's like it's like the mask wearing for me. It's like fun. And it's part of the reason why. Like I wish that we would get magic bands here at, at Disneyland because I just think mm -hmm. it's fun to kind of have like. I, I don't know. I think it's just fun to pick out your magic band. <laughs> 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 and and, and I mean, the mask thing is sort of the same thing. It's just fun to kind of pick up different designs mm -hmm. and stuff. I've been it's having a, I've been having an okay time with the mask. I think it's been kind of a kind of a cool thing picking out different designs. But like you said, we're in California. We have a very dry heat, mm -hmm. which is much different than in Florida, where you walk outside and you're like have to wring out your shirt because you're soaking. <laughs> you know, so no we're kind of we're kind of blessed out here in California because in Florida, yeah, these masks probably suck. I mean, I couldn't imagine wearing this in the humidity that Florida have to deal mm -hmm. with. But in California, we're fine, man. We're we're. You know, it's all good out here. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm totally fine with it. I, I'll wear it every time I go out. Yeah. So, and also, <laughs> reminds me of like, like pin trading almost. Like you can buy a little pin, but instead it's like a, you can get your own mask. And then, well, obviously you don't want to trade mask, but you can show off your own <laughs> little mask. And, you know, it's like, it would be different, I'd say, if like Disney or Universal or one of those places, like, they force you to wear like a, like a boring, like, blue or uh, you know the ones surgical. that look like the surgical masks and they force you to wear and they just, they hand out so you have to wear this you can't wear your own no that's like different but you know it's, they're not like strict on the mask you can, as long as you're covering your face you can wear a bandana if you wanted to but as long as you're covering your face but uh but i guess yeah maybe it's just the florida people i've seen because i haven't really seen some say i'm from california and i don't want to wear a mask at disneyland um because they have an else open games. But yeah, you should definitely and wait, did you also get those? Did you get those from the Shop Disney website? No, no. This was actually um I I can send you the link. I forgot the name of the of the store actually. And you can if you want, I can send you the link. You can put it in the description below. But I actually got these, it was like um like a like a like a what's it called? Like a private like a person. Like they make these, you know. Oh, because I was yeah, like, they wow. Make these. Um, the and I, I can give you the through. link and you can put them below. But I, I actually, uh, yeah, the Shop Disney ones, I'm actually still waiting for my Shop Disney ones. I got, I got a baby. Oil. Oh, so you I'm did, you excited. get, you get, get, you got through to them. I'm like, wow, they weren't sold out. You're able to buy it. 
Yeah, I got the I got the, the Shop Disney ones pretty early. The the Star Wars one. I think there's like a it, it comes with like a four pack of like Baby Yoda, I think Mandalorian R two and I want to say like Boba um, Fett or something. Yeah, I, really I saw remember. that one. I saw I'm Baby Yoda and I just bought it. I didn't. Even <laughs> <get> it. <laughs> I saw that online. I was like, looked really cool. I'm like, ah, oh, poor poor little. Like, all the masks were sold out. I was like, wow. Um. So it brings us to the next question for, I guess this is for downtown Disney or City Walk. Within, I'd say, within the first week would you, of their announced reopening, would you, would you go just to oh. check it out or eat or just walk yeah. around yeah, to get absolutely. out of the house? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, as long as I'm wearing a mask, I, and I know maybe this is a false sense of security, but as long as I'm wearing a mask, as long as I'm washing my hands or having sanitizer, I'm fine. I mean, really, what's the difference? I go to Target to get food or whatever now. I go to Walmart or, or whatever to get supplies now. What's the difference between that and going to, like, Universal City Walk? It's essentially the same thing. As long as you're careful, mm-hmm. there's no exactly. problem. Yeah, just just wear your mask, wash your hands, you know, and you're, I think you're yeah. good, man. I think you're good. Especially at something like City Walk. Especially if you should walk and don't eat anything, you're not really touching any surfaces because there's not really many surfaces to touch. So, you know, it should be okay. And, yeah, and uh, you know what? Actually, to, just to kind of touch upon a point, and this might change. You know, mm-hmm. th- th- you know, this is just, you know, th- this might change. But the CDC actually released some information. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Oh yeah, with the surfaces. The surfaces. It, it, COVID nineteen is not too. It is not easily transmissible through surfaces. That, now, it's not impossible. You can still get it if you touch it and you touch your face. But they were saying that it's a pretty slim odd. There's pretty slim odds of catching it that way. It's usually person to person. When someone sneezes and you breathe in their droplets, which is pretty gross. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Gross. But like if you're like, yeah, but like if you're at City Walk and you, and you touch like a minion um, thermos. Mm-hmm. After someone had COVID, you know, an hour later, chances are you're not going to get it from that. You know, mm-hmm. is it impossible? No. Is it likely though? No. You're not. You're probably not going to catch it that way. And also, some it wasn't CDC, but uh, was it? No, it was, but <laughs> actually, on the news, uh, the local news, they said uh, masks. Um, second time I saw it, the mask that if you wear a mask, it's your uh, that you're seventy five percent less. Seventy, you, your chances of getting infected are seventy five percent less if you're wearing a mask, which is a major, like you know, major decrease. So the masks really they're not just fashionable, but they also really do help. They're not like just like you know, like what do they call like security theater or something to make you feel safe. They actually, you know, they really help. So yeah, bring your yeah, mask. <laughs> yeah. No, you're hundred percent right. They do. They do. They are effective. They do have a purpose. And this whole thing about quote unquote like you said security theater is kind of is kind of a uh, is kind of misleading because a lot of people say the same thing about the temperature checks when you go into a disney park or when you go mm. into universal when they do the temperature checks um people say that's just security theater but it's not really security theater is it 100 percent going to tell you if you have covid or not no it's not going to get it's not going to diagnose you with covid but is it useless? No, it's also not useless. There's a reason why when you go to the doctor, they check your temperature. When you go to the ER, they mm. check your temperature. Obviously, it serves a medical purpose. <laughs> it doesn't mean, though, that it's going to be completely um, definitive. Like, it, just because someone walks into Disney Springs and they have a fever of 101, does that mean they confirmed have COVID? No, absolutely not. But I think that's just one tool. Mm-hmm. in a, a toolbox of many tools that we can use to sort of weed out people or or, or kind of like stop the spread you know like mm-hmm. something doesn't have to be a hundred percent um confirmed for it to be um effective you know you can still mm-hmm. have the temperature checks and and still have a, a situation where maybe it doesn't confirm a COVID case, but at least it'll be one more thing to kind of look at. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People yeah. sort of have this mentality like it's either all or nothing. Either it confirms that you have COVID or it's useless. And I don't think it's either of those things. I think it's just, it, it's it, it's useful. It's mm-hmm. one thing that we can use to kind of help us gauge 
who can who 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 might be healthy and who might not be you know mm-hmm. and at the city walk in the disney springs that i know obviously because it's fewer people but i noticed they you know they use the handheld the temperature screen now for the parks i would think i don't know what universal well, at least for the disney parks i feel like they yeah, they would use uh shanghai system you know you walk to the tent you would think when you for the temperature screening of how was Shanghai, for the people entering the actual theme park, they walked through the for the walk through the tent and they like did the thermal thing. I feel like they would use that because instead of being a little handheld again, because then I feel like them would be like long lines. Yeah, that is a little surprising to me. That I mean, they, they're already using it, like you said, in Shanghai. I don't know why mm-hmm. they just wouldn't use it here. Maybe they feel like the the crowds aren't going to be as bad for Disney Springs, so they can mm-hmm. they have the time to do the handheld. But mm-hmm. I am a little surprised, though. I mean, the the the, the walk through tent situation in mm-hmm. Shanghai seems so easy and so effective. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, we get the walk through thing though when the parks open. I'm hoping we do. I really, really yeah. do. I'm also surprised. On a side note, that Disney doesn't use. Like, doesn't Universal have like a metal detector where you put your bag and it's kind of yeah, they do like the TSA airport style. Yeah, why doesn't Disney use that? Like, why do they pay cast members to sit there and go through your bags? <laughs> yeah, when like they can put through a metal detector now, no disrespect to the cast members. I mean, obviously, I'm glad that, that they have they have those cast members there that you know mm-hmm. they're working and they ha- and they can give those people jobs absolutely mm-hmm. but it just seems from like from an effective standpoint it just seems like it would be so much more effective to have what universal has where you just kind of put it on the conveyor belt and you scan it you mm-hmm. know also uh, in this situation it reduces the uh, you know the touching of everything you know you know people aren't they're not they're not touching things in your purse they're not touching i mean even though with this um, the transmission's less through surfaces, it just reduces all the touching, and then it's also, again, like 10 times faster just to put it through a X-ray, the, the scanner thing. So maybe they'll switch. Um, and Oh yeah, they have that here too, so maybe they'll, they'll switch, and they can just put it, it's kind of a permanent system in our parking structure, it's not, it shouldn't be that hard to put like, maybe like 10 scanners in there. Yeah. Right. They can do it before can do it before the park uh, the downtown Disney opens if they wanted to. Man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I I would love to see that if we get the technology here in Anaheim that Shanghai has. I think that would be so good. It would be really effective to kind of move people through a lot mm-hmm. faster than having to scan everyone's forehead and do that whole thing, you know? And last question. The theme parks when they reopen. Same thing, I assume it's yes, because you said with city walking thing, but will you go to the theme parks, uh, any one of them, um, when they reopen? Yeah, I would. I would. I would definitely go to the, I would definitely go to Disneyland or Universal when they reopen. Um, you know, I, I, I would definitely alter my behavior, though. Like, I would definitely wear oh, a yeah. mask, obviously. I would definitely wash my hands more. Obviously, I would probably avoid at least maybe the first couple times I go, I would probably avoid waiting in any kind of lines in terms mm-hmm. of interactions. I mean, that's just my own personal thing. I would probably just go and eat and and kind of walk around and kind of enjoy the atmosphere. Here. Yeah, exactly. And then as as things get more comfortable, then I would get on on rides again and go in, into the queue areas. But like, I would absolutely go. I would absolutely go. I would I would alter my usual routine though a little bit. I, I would probably mm-hmm. limit how many rides I go in on, mm-hmm. and and maybe I won't go on any. You know, I'm an annual pass holder. I can go mm-hmm. and have a Dole Whip and be fine. I can sit mm-hmm. on the bench. I can I can do whatever. You know, I mean that that I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And then maybe after a few visits, I would I would I would maybe get on a ride or something like that. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem going. How about you? How how would you feel like opening week? Would you would you go? Um, you know, I think I for for Disney against this farther away. I think I would go try to go in the first week. But for Universal, I already I have this grand plan. I plan to be there in line at eight or nine in the morning. <laughs> I have to get inside. I have to get inside. It's sushi because um, so like twenty minutes away. 
and I, I have to get inside. I have to go to some semblance of a theme park. Universal's closest, and <laughs> honestly, during the week, I don't know how it's going to be. But at least here during the week, um, a non-summer week, it you know the wait it's not not very crowded at Universal anyway, um, except at the side of peak months. So it's like a very nice experience to go in. There's like maybe like there's like there's we're already practicing social distancing basically like anyway. During on like a Wednesday, you go like a before all this, it'd be like super empty. Um, the rides were like five minute waits. So it'd be super nice to so just kind of go, yeah. film my stuff, ride my couple rides, and go home. For like, say for like maybe a two hours and sleep. Because again, I have annual pass, so you don't, I don't spend ten hours there. That's what we'll probably do when it reopens too. We'll probably just go film the construction update. Maybe if depending on the lines, ride a couple things. And two hours later, or maximum two hours, and probably just go back home. You know. Yeah, because I can just go back the next day. And and that's the thing. That's the thing. Like with these parks, like for me, like I just like being there. A lot of people ask me on my channel, like, what's a what do you have to do when you go to Disney? What do you have to do when you go to Disney? I don't have to do anything. Like I'm not. I like just being at Disney. And like I don't mm -hmm. like I don't go to the parks and be like I have to ride Indy or it's a wasted trip. I don't do that. <laughs> I, I just I go and if if I go with with friends who want to do certain things, I do that. If I go by myself and I just sit on the bench the whole day, I do that. I'm fine with just being there. So that's yeah. kind of how I'm at. So like when I go back after the whole lockdown thing, yeah, I'm fine with not doing any rides. I'm okay with it. I just, I'm just glad to be back at Disneyland, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris, like I'm not going to rush to Rise of the Resistance like everybody else. I'm going <laughs> to <be> back. <laughs> Um, sit on Main Street. <laughs> sit on Main Street, eat a Dole Whip, or go to California Adventure and have a beer. <laughs> yes, and sit in front of a, a Paradise Bay and watch the Incredicoaster launch away. That's there you go. Oh, the by the way, things. speaking of that, I loved your video on the uh, Cal on the Incredicoaster and uh, and screaming. That was cool, man. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know that video is doing that pretty well on. But yeah, I'll link it above if you want to see. It's a it's follow up the Tower of Terror and Guardians of the Galaxy not so well, but people like the other ones. So thank you for watching anyone who has been watching that. And alas, what are you guys gonna do? So all these questions, comment your thoughts below and subscribe for more theme park updates. And as always, have a fantastic day.